Hey guys, Dr. Butts coming up with another fantastic chemistry video and today we're going to learn all about chemical reactions. We've waited for it, we've studied for it, and it's finally here. We get to do a chemical reaction, numerous ones actually. We're going to see color changes, solids form, bubbles, heat. It's going to be awesome, it's going to be epic guys, it's going to be so much fun. We're going to balance the equations, we're going to learn about conservation of mass and all this cool stuff. But we've got to get after it, we've got to get it done. So without any further ado, let's go! In today's experiment, we'll be doing chemical reactions. Part one, reactions with metals. So what we're going to do is put some hydrochloric acid into each of these test tubes, about five milliliters. Now it doesn't have to be accurate. It's not critical that it's five, milli five milliliters precisely or accurately, just enough to cover the piece of metal we're going to throw in there. So I'm just going to put in some acid. There we go. And then the one nearest to the acid bottle, I'm going to put in copper. Use my forceps here. A couple of small pieces of copper metal. In the middle one, I will put aluminum. And in the far, the far one, come here, I will put zinc. So here we have copper, aluminum, and zinc. All right, so in the next scene, I'm going to come in and zoom in closer onto the metal so we can see if there's any kind of chemical reaction occurring. In part two, we're going to do a whole bunch of different chemical reactions. So the first reaction we want to do is we want to mix in some sodium hydroxide with a little bit of silver nitrate. All right, so let's add the silver nitrate first. Take five drops of that. Put it into this well. And we'll add a little bit of sodium hydroxide. Now notice these are both clear, colorless liquids. And when I add them together, you get this. Now let me mix them up a little bit. Whoops, didn't mean for that to happen. But as you can see, you get a brown precipitate. So two clear, colorless reagents gave us a murky brown solid, liquidy substance. Next up on the list, magnesium chloride with sodium phosphate. So here's the magnesium chloride. Clear colorless liquid again. Sodium phosphate, another clear colorless liquid. All right, now so far it looks like nothing's really happened, but let's take a closer look, shall we? Ah, that's not clear and colorless anymore, is it? That is a fine white precipitate, so there's definitely some solid forming there. It's just really hard to see because it's so fine, but I think you will agree what's in the pipette right now is not colorless or clear. It's white and cloudy. Calcium chloride with sodium carbonate. So let's go to this well right here. One, two, three, four, five. Calcium chloride and sodium carbonate. Here we go, here's the sodium carbonate. Again, clear colorless solutions. All right, not a lot happening it appears, but let's take a closer look. Always take a closer look. Ah, look at that. Clear colorless liquids. Now we have a milky white liquid. 
there's a precipitate forming there. So this reaction definitely occurs here because you have a solid formation, and that is really cool. And last but not least, we're going to put magnesium chloride and calcium chloride together and see what happens. And we'll do it right here. So here goes the magnesium chloride, a clear colorless liquid. And here comes the calcium chloride, another clear and colorless liquid. All right, again, it appears like nothing's happened. Let's take a closer look. Never take it for granted. Ah, clear colorless. So it looks like nothing did happen in this reaction. All right, so this reaction fails. Nothing occurs. All right, but the other ones did. So make sure you drop that down in your data sheet. Make sure you balance those equations, guys. And that is the end of part two. I'll see you all in part three. All right, class, now we're doing experiment six, part three, chemical reactions, reactions with acids and bases. So now one of the ways to tell a chemical reaction has, has occurred is heat formation. So we're gonna try this with hydrochloric acid, about a half a mil, that's about a half a mil. It doesn't have to be exact. And we're gonna throw in some sodium hydroxide. Now this is a common acid-base reaction. And let's see what happens. Add them together. Mix, mix, mix. Now I'm going to take the palm of my hand, or the, the skin, and I'm going to press the test tube against it. Let me pull my glove down just a little bit. So this is my bare skin, and I'm touching the test tube to it. And I can feel there's a, definitely a temperature change going on here. So this is, there's definitely a chemical reaction between these two substances because it's getting warm. Now it's not hot, it's not going to burn me, but I can tell it's not room temperature, it's a little bit warmer. These two things mixed together to give off heat. Acetic acid and sodium carbonate. We're going to mix those two bad boys together. So now here goes the acetic acid. So this is essentially this is vinegar. You know, white vinegar you can buy at the store. It tastes really good on pickles. Just going to put some in there. That's about a half mil or a mil. It's fine. It doesn't have to be critical. It's not critical if it's exactly half a mil. And now let's see what happens when we put in a little bit of sodium carbonate. Bicarbonate, excuse me. See it? You see it? Bubble formation. Let's see if we can get some more. So when you add sodium bicarbonate to acetic acid or vinegar, you get a lots of bubbles, and those bubbles are CO2. And it's kind of still going. You can kind of still see it. So that's pretty cool. Bubble formation. All right, guys? And that is the end of part three. I want to wish you all good luck and good chemistry. See you soon.